even going to give it to the FBI, the phone calls that we've intercepted from people, even with a search warrant now. So they collect all this information with warrantless searches, they store it, and they say, we're not even going to share it with the FBI, even when they get a search warrant for to investigate a crime like now. That's the kind of petulant manipulation, uh, trying to get people to beg them to surveil us, right. okay? That's, that's what we see happening with this. This is how they're using this crisis. Well, meanwhile, what did the NSA do to stop these attacks? Because they were, their program yes. was still working when these people were in contact with terrorist organizations who were under investigation by the FBI. So clearly the NSA once again dropped the ball. Here we see this is surveillance. If they dropped the ball or if they did the same thing that they did in Pearl Harbor, as I Which pointed out, they had broken the cryptography of the Japanese. They knew precisely what was going mm -hmm. on for over a year. They're intercepting their communications and they knew for months what they were planning on doing. Yeah. And they kept it to themselves and, and particularly did not do anything so they could get the war they wanted. Yeah. And and that's that's why this whole sort of tyrannical um, just basically stopping any sort of speech and saying that you cannot speak derogatory in a derogatory fashion against someone's religion, particularly Islam, it's dangerous. So we have this guy, um, his Robert Kuttner, he is um, here on the Huff Post, and this is his opinion piece, but he says how ISIS and Trump enable each other. So he basically says anytime that Trump disparages Muslims who are not radicals, he increases the chances that some of those people will now turn into radicals. So well, you he can't might even look say, at the fact that we're bombing their countries, that we've started right. wars there. And unless they have a legitimate gripe about that and, and we have created that, I just don't want to see our government creating the crisis and then offering us one solution, one solution only for the humanitarian crisis that they created, and that is to import anyone that wants to, that they want to bring here without any kind of evaluation. Thank you, Leanne. Now, when we come back, we're going to have a clip from today's radio show. Steve Pachinik was a guest with Alex Jones, and he talks about how he sees the San Bernardino shootings as a total false flag. We'll be right back. You guys have the exclusive for, which is a product called Deep Cleanse. And why I'm so excited about it is it's a unique formula, almost like the iodine crystals. We have two unique products that nobody in the world has. One of the most amazing ingredients in the world, and it's called Shilajit. And it's actually known as blood of the mountain or rock sweat because thousands of years ago, as a matter of fact, this ingredient was only given to the elite of the elite. Thousands of years ago, up in the Himalayan mountains and in Tibet. And we wanted to put this in, in stuff for, for a couple of years, but we couldn't get an organic form. Right. I mean, so I, let's explain. I mean, we, this stuff's so good, we couldn't put it out for years. Right. So I had to actually, it's kind of like the iodine crystals, finding a source deep in the earth that we could get the cleanest source available. But in Tibet and in Nepal and in the Himalayan mountains, Thousands of years ago, they found, they watched these monkeys. And during the summer months, the monkeys would go up into the mountains. Now you're being racist against monkeys. And they would pick this black substance from the mountains. And so uh, in Russia, they actually, it, it, it grows in Russia in the mountains and in the Himalayans and only in the summer. And Chilajit is actually the decomposition of seven, up to 7,000 different medicinal herbs. So it decomposes, all these different herbs decompose in the Himalayan mountains and the volcanic soil up there. And what happens in the summertime- So it's almost like an oil up. from- Yes, it's high in fulvic acid, it's high in humic acid. Because they're always claiming out. oil is really from decomposed animals and plants. There is some oil that is based from fossils, but most of it's really abiotic. But so, so this is a true fossil uh, source. I mean, explain it to me. It is. A, it's really the decomposition, like I said, of over seven thousand different medicinal herbs and plants. And it, and with the rocks and the pressure deep in the mountains, it freezes and. And during the summertime and the pressures build it up, it oozes out. It oozes out. So it literally oozes out of the mountain. It's like rock sap. It's like rock sap. It's black and it's highly nutritious. Uh, even in the 1980s, when the Olympic athletes in Russia were accused of being on steroids, they found out that they were actually been given shalajit because it, it works as an anabolic as well. 
and it builds muscles. It's a big dose in there. The second big main ingredient in there is a volcanic zeolite concentrate. And this, what this formula is designed to do, the shilajit and the zeolites have a real strong negative charge. All the metals and chemicals and PCBs and VOCs have positive charges. So these go in, they grab it, and then they safely eliminate it through the body so you can become healthy. I mean, the, this is an amazing formula. I wish I actually had it, but because this was an exclusive InfoWars Life product, you're the only one in the world that has this formula now. And, uh, you know, there is going to be a limited supply available when you sell out because you can only harvest this once a year. How do people take it? How is it recommended that this be done? Just a daily, daily dose? Yeah, daily dose. Uh, the instructions are on the label. You know, of course, I, I kind of modify it for each individual. It depends on what your lifestyle is. I mean, the, honestly, the best thing to do is for you to avoid all these chemicals and toxins in your environment and try to identify them and start slowly reducing them. But personally, I, I'm going to probably take it every day, every other day, and I'll probably go with about a dropper full to maybe two dropper fulls. Uh, and I and I, li I don't expose myself to any chemicals. Infowarslife.com. Please also support our local AM and FM affiliates, support their local sponsors, or become a sponsor and spread the word. Because these aren't just great products. This is how we fund this independent operation. We're not taxpayer funded like MSNBC or NPR, and neither is your local station. So support them, folks. This is a war. <laughs> Understand that it's not just Democrats who have trouble using the phrase radical Islam. John McCain said this, I think it's an interesting effect of turning Muslims all over the world against the United States of America, which is 99.44% people who practice an honorable religion. And I guess my question would be, why would honorable Muslims be offended when we talk about radical Islam? I would think they would be just as offended as we are, if not more so, about people who they would think had hijacked their religion. But when he says 99.44%, think about that in terms of the number of people that Obama wants to bring in the country. 200,000 over the next two years. That would mean that 1,120 terrorists would be brought into this country. Those are the dangers that we face. Yet Steve Pachinik believes that it is something far more than these kind of provocative policies similar to what FDR did in setting up Pearl Harbor. He thinks it was a full out false flag. Here's what he had to say on the Alex Jones radio show earlier today. The San Bernardino issue, I'm still not sure where it stands in terms of a false flag. Number one, it's very rare to have a standing shooting operation in an in a, uh, uh, office where you have basically disabled individuals. That and by the way, seven. it is incredible. They were having a live shooting drill. They, this is ABC yeah. News. They were having a shooting drill now when this reportedly happened. Not only that, they've been having a shooting drill in the center of, of where disabled uh, veterans and others were living and having it on a monthly basis. So that really was, number one, an S1 flag. Number two, you had a woman who supposedly was in Pakistan, went to Saudi Arabia, was less, less than 100 pounds, being able to uh, wear a vest, at the same time carry guns, and at the same time shoot and Twitter, absolutely impossible. And at the same time, we had a... So why would they uh, allow a jihad false flag? And, and, and to be clear... Because there's one issue that you have brought out repeatedly and correctly, and that was the Sandy Hook issue transposes everything we have here, and that is gun control for Obama. His last wish and dying wish may well be dying wish is that we have a gun control in the United States. That is not going to happen. And at the same time, he has really committed criminal acts against the United States with the help, once again, of our CIA, our intelligence community, and other elements of our government. Well, let me expand on that. And, and I I've sent Joe Biggs to a bunch of these. He never thinks they're a false flag. He's a combat vet, smart guy. He says because of the drill at the same time. He says because of the tweeting while the killing's going on. He says because of the drill at the exact same time and other things. He bare minimum thinks that they had warned people locally they were ready. 
Uh, not that they were involved, but that higher-ups opened the door to make sure it went ahead and happened. They gave them the passport. They gave them, they let her back in with a you know fake address and fake info. So bare minimum, they were being protected. So that is a stage one, uh, you know, partial false flag, well, bare minimum. Uh, but, but and if I can say anything to your audience, we do not have one year left to live out this administration. Stop it right cannot. there. I, uh, Steve, I want you to I skip this break. It's so important. I want you to flesh out, because a lot of people say, and Trump said, well, you know, it'll make him a martyr politically if we go after him. He's in so much trouble. You know, I don't know if we have time in the next year, but my concern is the way Obama's acting, the way his people are acting, the way they're getting really nasty and, and really making more and more stuff up, they're acting like they're getting ready to move against the American people. And, and so if you agree with that, I'd like to know what you think we should be watching out for, what they might pull. Well, what I agree with is that he is out of control and he's never, he's not, he's fronting for an organization that's consisting of the Pritzkers, the Chicago Rami Emanuel, who, by the way, was being prosecuted for incompetency, lying, and distortion, even by the New York Times. And what we had was a distraction in San Bernardino from his good friend and buddy from childhood, Rami Emanuel and the Chicago mob. And that's part of what San Bernardino was about, was to take away the attention when the New York Times asked for the resignation of Ram Emanuel and the entire government of Chicago. So what we expect to have is more denial, more crime, and more distortions of the truth. What we need to do is to initiate a referendum where we will ask the president to step down. I do not want an assassination. What I want is a, a referendum where the people say we can no longer wait for a year. We do not want anyone else, and we will want to nominate, by choice, Trump. And either we have the elections now or we don't have the elections. We do not have one more year. And all this nonsense that's going on where ISIS is supposedly creating terrorist attacks all over the world, which they're not, quite frankly. If they're, they're, you've got to remember the two leaders of ISIS. The, the soul and the military arm were both in our prisons in Baghdad for over eight months. And if anybody in your audience believes that we in the military or the intelligence community didn't double up these guys, and ISIS should know this, and every Sunni... They would have never Wahhabi been released. Muslim. They would have been given acid baths if they of weren't course. double agents. They are double agents for us. So anybody who follows these fools knows that they're following CIA and military intelligence operatives who've been doubled by us easily, and then we create the false flags, the, the false enemies, which basically we claim are Muslims. The Muslims are not our enemy. They are the enemies, perhaps, of Israel, who has a problem with their survival, but we are not... Well, I'll say this. Obviously, that. Wahhabis being brought in is meant for there to be attacks, so the government's yeah. bringing them in. They are, at the top of the food chain, guilty. Now let me be very frank. In my business, and they know this from my past experiences, it's easy for me to take out the Wahhabis and the Salafis in Saudi Arabia and Pakistan. That's the easiest work I can do. But fortunately, they're not letting me or others do that kind of work because they're easy to neutralize the way they were neutralized in other countries and other worlds, which I was involved with. But unfortunately, our government is involved in creating these episodes, like Bush Sr. was involved in allowing Noriega to start agitation propaganda. Why? Because he wanted an excuse to send in the 82nd Well, well absolutely, but he, here's my question. I think they've misjudged the calculus to be able to bring in radical jihadis, have them attack us, and then take our guns and restrict internet free speech as Hillary's trying to do. I see how they brought them in to let them do it. I get it's a false flag ultimately because they brought them in. Correct. I just don't the see how they is, think they'll get away with that. Well, let me put this one. I, I really have to look back at San Bernardino and you look at Como, uh, Como the interviewer in the newspaper and in the, in the, in CB, on uh, CBS or ABC where he asked the lawyer, uh, you know, there are many holes in this story. Number one, both the husband and wife were handcuffed. Number two, they were able to Twitter while they were shooting. Number three, you know, you have a high military operation where even if you were a black widow, you couldn't be trained in this, particularly if you're 90 pounds. And the other, general, and the other man had no idea of how to deal with military capacity. But there was a third man who nobody talked about. 
My point to you is this is consistent with Sandy Hook. Once you have lied, once you have contrived false scenarios, Just go all the way. you continuously be a liar. And you will continuously be... Well, there is some the evidence that the Obama husband and wife were decoys and there were other shooters, and that's usually how you do exactly. it. Exactly. That's exactly sure. what I must have. But the issue isn't this. The issue is much greater. Do we, can we continue 